Hello and welcome to Social Media Ministries. My name is Spencer Kaufman. Thank you for being with us today. We've got a great message for you. I really hope that you take advantage of those share icons on whatever platform you are viewing or listening on to share this with others. In addition, hit the subscribe button so you can stay tuned and updated to future sermons and hit that like button as well. And if you feel called to support us, you can do so on our website. We love to have prayer sharing, commenting, liking, and of course, financial support as well. So today, what are we talking about? We are talking about something that you need in your everyday life. Because sometimes when you go through life, especially around holidays or birthdays or times of trauma or tragedy, it just seems to be too much. Life can get overwhelming and at times like those, you need to remember to rely on God's strength. Many times as humans, we tend to go through life and we want to do it ourselves or rely on our own strength or our own power or we take initiative and believe that we can get it done and we can do it and, and that we have what it takes. And although that may be true in this earth, when we're talking about spiritual battles on the daily grind, going through and taking ground and advancing for the kingdom, we can't do it without God. We're helpless without him. So you need to rely on God's strength. There is a phrase that children learn in Sunday school. It's an acronym and it uses the word frog. It means fully rely on God. There are even bracelets that kids have that they wear them and it's frog or it's green or they have pencils that are green. It's fully rely on God. It's really simple. You need to fully rely on God. It means that you trust him 100% of the time. God is strong. God is the strongest. He is the most powerful king in the universe. So every moment of every day, you need to remember that. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Pray continually. That's it. Pray continually. What does that mean? Well, you need to remember to continually pray always and give thanks to God, but pray all the time, meaning that you need to rely on God in everything. So whatever you're going through, pray about it. I don't care if you're thinking of going and getting a car wash, you're going to the grocery store, whatever it is, all the time you need to be praying, God, help me get a good parking spot. God, I pr please... I have the line at the car wash be short. Anything, even when you see people, pray for that person, pray for this person. Rely on God's strength. You can even be praying all the time, God, give me strength. God, help me do this. Because he wants to hear from you. In everything you do, ask God to help you because he will help you. You are his child. Let's go to Ephesians 6.18. Ephesians 6.18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. All kinds of prayers and requests. It doesn't say, only pray for things for other people. Or only pray for gifts of the Spirit. Or only pray for food. No. No all kinds of prayers and requests on all occasions. This is significant. It means that anything, no matter how big or how small, you need to be praying about it all. Trust God. Rely on his strength and pray in the spirit. What does that mean? It means that if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have a, a language inside of you. Speaking in tongues. You may not know what it is, you may not understand it, but you can pray in the Spirit all the time. And when you pray in the Spirit, you're speaking God's language. Now, of course, God can speak all of our languages here on earth. But the Spirit, when you're praying in the Spirit, something else happens. Something unlocks and we are able to do even more than we could possibly imagine. Pray in the Spirit. If you have that ability, always be praying in the Spirit. And if you don't have that ability, then guess what? You can get it. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You can do it. May you be speaking in tongues as a manifestation of that baptism. 
If you, if you still don't have it, just pray to God. Uh, do some research. There are plenty of good videos and sermons online that can help you unlock that or achieve it. It's you receiving it from God. We already have it. We just need to unleash it, so to speak. God will help you. Pray to him. You're his child, and he will give you what you ask for if it is what you need. Now, of course, you have to be asking for the right things. We have a sermon on that. Check it out. It's called Ask God for the Right Things. Uh, it's easy to get carried away when you pray and be asking God for all kinds of stuff, like more money or a better job or whatever it may be, a promotion. But we need to remember that we need to be asking God for things according to his will. Let's go to Luke chapter 11, verse 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 11. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, guess what? Ask God. Because Luke 11, 11 through 13 says, do it. Ask God, you will receive. It's something God wants you to have. If you're asking God for the Spirit, for, for being baptized in the Holy Spirit, to be able to speak in tongues, to be able to prophesy, to have more gifts of the Spirit, that's in line with God's will. He's going to give it to you. It may not be instantly right now, but if you keep praying and keep asking, he will give it to you. Because if we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will God give to us? So the next time you have a bad day or you're tired, call on God because he cares for you. He wants to help you. Let's go to Matthew now. Matthew 11 28. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So, if you're weary or burdened or tired, you need to rely on God. How many times are we going to say it? Well, someone can count it up and be at the end and it says, Oh, 153 times you said rely on God. Because it's important. God is strong. We are weak. Remember the song, Jesus Loves Me? We are weak and he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. When you're weary or burdened or tired and life's getting you down, call on Jesus. He will give you rest. When you're worn out and need motivation, call on him. When you need energy, ask God. When you have problems, when life is overwhelming you, when you're starting to feel anxious, or overwhelmed, call on God. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Memorize that verse. Put it up in your house so that you see it every day. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Let's go to Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Be righteous. God will never let you fall. He will lift you up. He will carry you through. Rely on God's strength. Let's go to Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not be dismayed. Do not fear. God is your God. He is the most powerful thing ever, most powerful being. He is the only true living God. And he has the power to carry you through whatever situation you're in. All you need to do is let him. Ask him. He's waiting for you to call out to him and ask. He's not going to do it unless you ask. You have free will. You have the choice. So, make the choice. God never gets worn out or tired. He's God. Ask him to share some of his motivation with you. He will. 
Ask him to share some of his energy with you. He will. Ask him to share his peace with you. He will. You'll get whatever you need. God loves to help his children. We have an entire sermon called Better Than Birds that you should check out. It's in a card up here if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, go to our website, type in Better Than Birds. It's part of a series on trusting God, not worrying, because he cares for you. Don't all good parents care for their children? We do. God is the best parent. Remember what Matthew said, though we are evil, or Luke said, though we are evil, and we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more so would the Father in heaven? We just read that verse in Luke. It's Jesus' words, but it was in Luke. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 to 11. Ask, seek, knock. That's what we're talking about. It's this paragraph, but we're going to skip ahead a little bit. 9 to 11. Ready? Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So, in Luke, we were talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. You can ask God for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And though we are evil and we know how to give good gifts, how much more so will a father give the Holy Spirit to you? Yes, he will. Then in Matthew, Jesus is saying gifts, specifically gifts, good gifts. Ask God. Ask God to give you all the gifts in his will. If you don't know what you're asking for, you don't know what, what you need, if you're like, well, I don't know what... Uh, some of the gifts might be. Just say, God, give me the gifts of your will. Pray that every single day. And then when you're tired, ask for energy. Ask for strength. Ask for motivation. Ask for good, dependable qualities and characteristics. Remember, God's only going to give you what you need. So if you start asking for the ability to predict the future or the ability to talk to the dead, or things like that, he's not going to give them to you. If you ask for a bunch of money, or a bigger house, or a faster car, or whatever, material things, he may give them to you, but he may not. Ask for his will to be done in your life, and you will receive it. If you ask for energy after uh, committing a crime, and you ask for energy to run from the police, you're not going to get it. But if you have the right intentions... God will always provide for you. Let's go to James chapter 4, verse 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. James is telling you, when you're asking for things, you need to have the right motivations because if you have the wrong motivations, you're not going to get it. God isn't going to give you things that you don't need. So when you're having a tough time in life and you're, you're just, life is beating you down. I'm talking to you who has anxiety, you who have depression, you who are thinking that you have no friends, that you might be contemplating suicide, thinking if the world is better off without you. Guess what? All of those negative thoughts and emotions are exactly that. They are negative. There is no place for them in your mind. There is no place. Because you are a child of God. You matter and you have a purpose. We have a sermon on that, that you have a purpose and a calling. You need to live that calling in your life and you need to take ground for the kingdom. Rely on God's strength. We can't do it on our own as humans because as humans, guess what? I have anxiety, I have depression, I have a hard time, but we rely on God's strength. Now, you may say, well, I've never been to a doctor and gotten a pill for anxiety or a pill for depression, but you think you might have it, but maybe you don't, so you just write it off and it's okay and, and you, you're not sure. It doesn't matter. Everyone has sad days. Everyone has tough times. 
some more than others. But you need to rely on God to get you through, and he will. And, and he'll use these things. He'll use these negative emotions and negative feelings in your life for the good of those who love him. He will use it to build his kingdom. I didn't make that up. That's a verse. He works for the good of those who love him. So if you show that you love God and you continue to pray for the things that God wants you to have, pray for his will to be done in your life. Pray for him to bless you with good and perfect gifts on earth as it is in heaven. Pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit on earth as it is in heaven, that you may accomplish and achieve God's will here on earth and grow the kingdom. Pray for the abolishment of all kinds of negative thoughts and emotions because those are coming from the enemy. When the devil speaks, he's lying. And when he lies, he speaks his native language. That's in the scripture. The devil is speaking to you. Because he knows you're a child of God. And he doesn't want you to achieve your purpose and your calling. So when he speaks to you, he's lying. And he's telling you that you don't matter. That you're worthless. That you are overwhelmed. That you have anxiety and depression. And what could you possibly do as one person? Many great people were one person. Mother Teresa was one person. Billy Graham was one person. Martin Luther King Jr., one person. These people can change the world. You can change the world if you rely on God. Let his strength carry you through each and every day. Make it a daily effort to shut out the devil's lies, to take every thought captive, and make it obedient to Christ. Positive thoughts, asking for good gifts, every moment of every day, praying that God carries you through. And he will do it. God is faithful. Read the Bible if you need more proof of that. The Old Testament is filled with stories. Joseph, do you think he was discouraged when his own brothers sold him for slavery and he was a slave in Egypt? Then God blessed him and made him in charge of a household. And after some time, Potiphar's wife said, he committed adultery, he raped me. And Potiphar burned with anger and locked him in prison for something he didn't do. Again, yet again, he was cast out. He had to have been pretty discouraged, pretty hopeless, pretty depressed, pretty angry, pretty filled with anxiety. But God carried him through and then made him the most powerful person under Pharaoh. So the second most powerful person probably in the world at that time. God can do mighty things. Read the Old Testament for encouragement. Read the New Testament to learn more about Jesus' words and what he's saying to you. This is what you should listen to, not the lies of the devil and the enemy. So, if you're having a tough time, we would love to pray with you. Comment below, reach out to us on our Facebook page or Instagram, and we will pray for you. In addition, pray for others who comment. Together, we can all get through this. Rely on God's strength. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this message. It's a tough topic for a lot of people to grasp with the fact that that they have these negative feelings and these negative emotions. And sometimes when you are looking out of a big hole or you feel like you're at the bottom of a pit, it's so difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would speak into their ear. Let them hear your voice. Let them see what you want them to see. Let them feel your presence. Encourage them to reach out to you, to pray, to always be praying. Bless them, Lord, with good gifts. Bless them with the gifts of the Spirit. Bless them with encouraging things happening in their lives. That, that your will be done each and every day in each and every one of their lives. And Lord, always, always inspire them to continue 
to read your word and to pray. Make it a daily habit so that they shut out the voice of the enemy's lies and that they listen to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. We hope you have a great week. God bless.